Hey peoples, it's Ross, and today we're going to be talking about the rooting process, particularly cuttings of fig trees. Um, cutting season is upon us. I recommend that you do not go crazy with the amount of varieties, also the amount of cuttings you're currently rooting. Do this in stages. Root maybe four to five cuttings at a time. If you're seeing good success, then start rooting some other ones. Also be careful with the varieties you select and the buyers that you choose to buy from. Now, um, this method I'm about to show you guys is called the direct potting method. And there's many methods you can use. They all essentially do the same thing. I have chosen this method because it is the easiest method. Um, it's the simplest method and there is the least steps required. Step one, get a pot. doesn't matter what size the pot is. I like to use four by nine tree pots. They are really nice for rooting because the amount of roots that we can bear, the amount of buds, I'm sorry, that we can bury in the soil, the more roots we potentially can have. So in this particular cutting, guys, I buried this six nodes deep. At every node, there is a chance to form roots. I have also scored the bark on the bottom. We made a fresh cut on the bottom. You can't see that because there's soil there. But because we made a fresh cut, we are exposing the cambium, we're exposing the hardwood. That will callus up. And when that callus is up, you will also get roots at those locations. So it's very simple. We fill the pot. I use a four by nine tree pot, like I said. We fill it with a well draining soil. For me, I prefer uh, the standard soil conditioner that I use for every single tree that I own. Every single potted plant. That's probably 200 or so potted plants use this soil. It's half compost and half pine bark. Now you can use a soilless mix, which works probably slightly better for rooting. Uh, a lot of people use Pro Mix, which is half perlite, half peat moss with some uh, mycorrhizae added. It's nice because it's soilless, but it's also it's actually a, a bit of a disadvantage because a soilless media has no nutrients, whereas my compost does. So that's something to consider. Now we want it well draining. We also want the soil moist at all times. Moist, not wet, not dry. If you overwater, you can kill your cutting. You can get too much water on this and it will rot. Not enough water. You won't have enough humidity um, for this cutting to actually root. So the soil moisture level is extremely important. I recommend that you pay very close attention to that, especially for the first month or two. This is a really long process, so if you're not into something that's going to take a lot of your time, um, it's going to be you have to be patient. If you're not willing to do that, you're going to waste your money doing this. So, moisture level is important. We have a moist soil in here. The last step, guys, we've scored the bark. We made a fresh cut on the back. The top here we've wrapped with parafilm. Very, very simple. You get your parafilm here from Amazon, eBay. I get them in bulk, half inch thick, about 200 feet long or 150 feet long. Pretty affordable. Also, I use this for about a million things in an orchard setting, guys. Grafting, propagating, keeping things alive that look a bit dead. There's a million uses for this stuff. Um, we wrap that parafilm, which is a wax, and that wax helps preserve moisture. It helps promote humidity. So the bottom half of the cutting has humidity from the soil, from the moist soil. That humidity and higher temperatures above 70 degrees Fahrenheit will activate this cutting to then send out roots. On the top, we need humidity as well. You get the humidity from the parafilm which also prevents this thing from drying out. That humidity then activates this cutting to not root at the top, but to actually send out new shoots. 
from the buds, which is very, very important. We need to have both of those two things happening simultaneously for us to be successful. Um, we need the roots to root, we need the, the bottom to root, and we need the top to send out leaves. So it's important that you're playing around with the temperature, you're playing around with the soil moisture. Um, here in this environment, currently, it's 75 degrees. I think 70 degrees is the minimum, but uh, 75 is recommended. We also want a lower humidity here, which is perfect indoors, in my house. We get a lower humidity. So when that happens, this will actually send out new leaves and new stems through the parafilm. It'll break through that no problem. And then once it breaks through, it'll be automatically adjusted to the room's humidity. It's very, very important. Um, pretty soon in my house, because it's getting cold here, we're going to kick on the heater in the house, and the humidity in the house is going to drop probably to another, probably to 20 to 30 percent, and it'll be stable at that percentage throughout the entire winter. So it's very important to have a stable environment. Um, and we're going to talk more about that. I think we're going to do a separate video, guys, on the environment that I'm rooting these cuttings in, the lighting system that I've selected, the temperature, the humidity. We're going to go into all of that in a separate video. But for this one, this was the exact step-by-step -step process that I go through with every single one of my cuttings. I wish you guys luck, and uh, don't go too crazy. So this was Ross. Um, and like I said in the beginning, we're going to follow this whole step-by-step -step process, documenting it the whole way, so you guys get a good idea of what's going on here. All right. Take care, and I'll talk to you all later. That was the direct potting method. See you next time.